Many years ago, I read a book by Orson Scott Carr titled Ender's Game. It is a strange, brutal tale of child soldiers competing against one another in preparation for war. It centralizes around Andrew Wigan, a particularly gifted child, and his journey through training, battle school, and what comes afterwards. It is cruel and unforgiving. It is a story of harsh awakenings, mistaken conflicts, and dreadful fallout. And despite Orson Scott Card's views on homosexuality, is a wholly good, worthwhile book that challenges the reader during each turn of the page. The movie was just recently released, and I went to see it. Here's the trailer. You'll be the finest commander we've ever trained. So I'm not the first? No, but you will be the last. mention the drama surrounding Orson Scott Card first before I can continue this review. I do not believe in boycotting an art project just for the sake of protesting the artist. To me, the artist is a mere vessel, a means for the artwork to come into actualization. I rarely care who the actual artist is. I merely enjoy the work presented or detest it on its own merits, not on my judgment of an individual I personally do not know. I detest Orson Scott Card's politics and his viewpoints on homosexuality. However, I find his Ender series of books marvelous works. I can enjoy the art, but disagree with its creator. So yes, I went to go see Ender's Game. And guess what? I enjoyed it. The book and the movie are two different projects. I will say though that the overall story of the book is presented in the film, but there are lost pieces of nuance that, if they were included, would have made the movie much better. However, if they included more of the book's narrative, the movie could have run as long as a Lord of the Rings film. To me, that would have been great. I would have enjoyed that. But that is not what they gave us. The movie, as it stands during the theatrical release, is just under two hours in length. And because of that, there is a sense that the overall film is rushed. In the book, we get to understand Ender Wiggins' mind through what happens to him, how he is tested, the bullying he endures, how he reacts to said bullying, and there is an array of interpersonal relationships that add a great deal to the book's narrative. The film's adaptation of the book is severely limited in the scope of his relationships and experiences. Because of that, there is a loss of understanding between the audience and Ender. Andrew Wigan is both ruthless and empathetic. He is caring and pragmatic. He can't always show his feelings, but beneath his skin is a monumental wealth of emotions. At times they come out, and in those moments both good and bad things can happen. The book communicated this well enough. I don't think the movie did. It was too fast paced, but maybe I am wrong. What do you think? The movie isn't a bad one. If you can keep up with the faster than normal pace of the film and temper your expectations, it does deliver a wonderful heart pounding experience. At least it did for me. The action was well done, the special effects were superb, and the acting was great. Harrison Ford has once again given a stellar performance. So did Asa Butterfield, the kid that played Ender. I really do want Ender's Game to perform well in the box office. I have a dream of watching a Speaker for the Dead movie one day, but somewhere deep within, I doubt it will ever happen. I rate Ender's Game a 7.0 out of 10. It is a good film that has its flaws, but it is well worth the money and time at the theater. It won't change your life, but it will entertain you for the duration you are seated, and maybe just maybe, it will give you something to think about after you leave the theater. As always, please like and share this review, and thank you for watching.